Hello, dear students. Your servant sir is back once again, and this time we'll be dealing with nucleophilic substitution reaction of the first order, or you can say unimolecular nucleophilic uh, substitution. That is, it is nothing but it is your SN one mechanism. Okay, interesting. In the previous episode, we had come across SN2 reaction. Now we are taking SN1. There is a difference in the mechanism. In general, we always play the reactions simply and we complete the reactions so easily without understanding the mechanisms. For example, in this case, you can see we have chosen over here the tertiary butyl bromide, you can say, or IUPSC name if you want to suggest, you can say. 2 methyl 2 bromo propane fine when it undergoes reaction with any of the polar solvent like water and alcohol and such type of solvents when combined with uh, potassium hydroxide and the reaction is such that the br of the previous compound gets replaced and gives you the alcohol accordingly so we complete the reaction simply but we do not understand the mechanism now in this particular reaction SN1, we are understanding the whole mechanism, how this reaction actually takes place. What happens is, first of all, I would like to clarify that why it is a unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. There is a reason behind that, that in such a type of reaction, only and only the concentration of substrate is taken into consideration. That is, according to chemical kinetics, the concentration of substrate when participates or when it is taken into consideration we say it is that order reaction so your order of reaction depends only on the one that is substrate concentration and so it is nucleophilic substitution of first order that is very clear now we come to the reaction in this reaction what happens is initially when uh, in presence of the polar solvent a potassium hydroxide is added the substrate that is over here you can see the reactant tertiary butyl bromide undergoes hydrolytic fission hydrolytic fission the reason the br over here is more electronegative than the carbon to which it is bonded so when in presence of polar solvent such reaction occurs the br with its minus sign that is bromide ion separates from the carbon and as a result tertiary carbocation is formed this stage is slow because it is always a rate determining st step or stage and uh, always the first stage is a slow step and so you can see i have written over here it's a slow step mechanism so what happens a carbocation that is tertiary carbocation is formed now when a tertiary carbocation is formed there are two probabilities I have shown over here the electron density uh, for the incoming nucleophile there will be two probabilities that is in the case of hydroxide ion which is a nucleophile over here it can attack either from front side or from the rarer side so I have shown both the probabilities over here and finally of course as this probability arises I would explain the whole mechanism over here I have taken again the same carbocation, tertiary carbocation, which is your su substrate, and allowed the nucleophile to attack that carbocation, that is carbon with the plus sign. This is a fast step, that means OH minus attacks the carbon. This time it attacks the carbon from both the sides. As you can see, I have shown over here, the OH minus with its dense electron cloud attacks, you can say, from front side, if this is so, and also from the rarer side, as this is so. So it's an intermediate stage. The mechanism shows the intermediate stage where you can see both the OH minus attacks the carbocation, which is tertiary. Now see, this tertiary carbocation, actually what happens in that, once I said that it attacks from front and the rarer side, you will always have the probability of its dextro and levo uh, rotations. That is either it may rotate the plane of polarization to the right or to the left and that will arise or comprise in formation of a racemic mixture. Because you can see in one case the OH minus attacks from the front side in the other case it gives you the rarer side effect so your equal proportions i, I repeat your equal proportions of levo and dextro forms are 
observed or formed and that is why I have just theoretically shown you a mirror and that shows the image if this is the object this is the image and both are in equal proportions we come back over here the carbocation further undergoes as I said reaction with the nucleophile that is potassium hydroxide here we have taken hydroxide and that's a fast stage and that finally ends up with tertiary butyl alcohol that is there but how that is formed that is formed in the form of a racemic mixture so here I would say simply that according to chemical kinetics the rate of reaction depends only and only on the concentration of substrate so I'll say that is equal to K into concentration of substrate that is all so here it is only one participation that is substrate participation with respect to its concentration and so it is your SN1 reaction mechanism that's the difference between SN1 and 2 in 2 there was no hydrolytic fission taking place here initially the hydrolytic fission takes place here tertiary, tertiary butyl bromide is inactive and so its product formed is also inactive but instead of tertiary butyl bromide if you go with uh, secondary butyl bromide then that is an optical active compound so the product obtained will be secondary butyl alcohol that is also optically active so we should always keep this in mind that if the initial reactant is optically inactive the product obtained is also optically inactive and vice versa so this is how you learn SN1 mechanism in previous episode you learnt SN2 mechanism both mechanisms are very important as far as nucleophilic substitution reactions concerned prepare well so that whenever you come across such type of reactions you can apply the fundamental aspect till then good night good day and have have the thorough study for this particular topic thank you so very much